I recently posted the question to my social media, what flower do you want to learn to draw and why? And your responses were plentiful and great. So that's exactly what we're doing today. Here's every flower you want to learn to draw. Welcome back friends, my name is Shada Campbell and on this channel we get creative together. Our first request is from Connie, Lily of the Valley, because my leaves look one dimensional and flat and I just happen to have picked some from my garden, it has the most amazing smell. I totally get this comment because the flowers are so delicate and tiny and then it has these giant, rather plain leaves. So when you're illustrating it, how do you balance that? So that's what we're gonna talk about as we do our little doodle. Starting in pencil, we'll draw one blossom first. You need a line that curves at the top and then you just draw all these little circles all along it, maybe make it a bit longer, and then do another one. Same thing, whole bunch of little circles, have them overlap slightly, and then you're going to put in one or two of those large leaves. A great way to deal with the large flat leaves is to draw one of them on an angle. And then start going over that in pen. You've done the guide in pencil. Now as you refine in pen, you can add details like giving the bottom of each blossom a little scalloped edge or a ruffled edge. We'll go over the stems, add some little um, bits to join the flowers to the stems, just little curving lines, and then continue that contour drawing by thickening the stems and going over those big wide leaves. So that's the contour drawing, the initial drawing complete. Get rid of all those pencil marks so you can really see your illustration. And then you're going to take a smaller fine liner, so a pen with a tinier nib, and we're just gonna do a little bit of line shading. Some small curving lines on the sides of each blossom will help them to look rounded. And then a whole bunch of thin lines on those big, wide, flat leaves will help them to not just look so basic. So just do thin lines that kind of move with the shape of the leaf and keep going over and over until you've darkened the leaf and you really can tell what is leaf and what is flower. Want a little extra guidance with some of these illustrations? I have a worksheet available. You can find it on my Patreon. Head over there, it's only two bucks a month to join or $22 for the entire year and you get access to the huge archive of content, meaning tons of worksheets. Next up, Laura Jane asks for a dog rose because they're her favorite wildflower. So we're gonna draw two flowers. Start with a circle and an oval. The circle gets a little circle right in the center, the oval, a tiny thin oval right at the bottom. Then you're going to place those petals. For the circle, all the petals will be equal, but for the oval, the front two are gonna be really short and that's helping with that look of perspective. And that's all you have to do is start with that guide. Working in pencil, you'll also place a whole bunch of tiny oval shaped leaves that come to a bit of a point. And then for the stamen in the center, we're just gonna do a whole bunch of little dots and lines. Start going over everything in pen. At this point, you begin to refine your illustration. So you can change up the shape of the petals a little, you know, make them a little more ruffled or pointed on the end. Put in lots of those little dots at the center to mark that stamen. And you can also give the leaves a bit more of a toothy edge. You don't need to do that in pencil. Just start by making that oval shape in pencil. When you go around in pen, it's easy to make those, those little changes and add all those details. This is the process of refining. And then I like to do a few little veining lines on each leaf. At that point, your contour sketch is done. Now you can begin going in with that smaller fine liner and adding all those little shading lines, if you like. I like to reach for a smaller pen, but you don't have to. And remember guys, all of the supplies are linked in the video description. I'm actually working on watercolor paper today in my Canson sketch pad. Um, I just love drawing on this nice thick toothy paper and I'm using the Mulatto black liners. So check them out. It's a great way to support the channel is to shop those Amazon links. That line shading has really brought these wild roses to life and I focused my line shading mainly on the leaves with just a little line shading on the flowers. Jessica requested lavender because she's tried it and hers always look childish and I get that. So here's how I'm starting, just with some thin lines in a cluster. Then you're going to draw a cylinder at the end of two or three of those lines. 
and then you begin to fill in the cylinder with a whole bunch of tiny little ovals and dots and lines, just like this cluster. And uh, you'll see as we go over it in pen how it really comes together to create the lavender blossom. So lots of little shapes like lines and even little floral shapes, mainly ovals, maybe some heart shapes, all of it clustered together to make that lavender blossom. With those blossoms looking good, we'll thicken up and go over the stems, and then you can add a few really thin grass-like leaves in amongst that cluster of flowers, and it just brings the whole design together. And I just did it very, very sketchy and messy, and I think it looks great. Okay, and Taylor said seeing a sunflower illustration would be amazing. So here's how we start with a circle. Then go around and do another circle, but kind of offset, followed by filling it in with a whole bunch of lines. That'll help guide the petals. And that's exactly what we're doing now, making all these petal shapes. The ones along the bottom will be a lot smaller and put a whole bunch in behind as well. And then you can do a stem, maybe some leaves, and we start going over everything in pen. Make sure to wiggle the pen a little bit so that some of those petals are a bit wonky and messy, and you want most of them to come to a bit of a point. You're gonna go into that center and just do a big crown of lines. Take those little lines all the way around, leaving that big white area in the center, and then you're going to do another cluster of small lines right in the center, leaving a like kind of a ring. You'll continue the contour drawing by thickening the stem, going over those leaves, and adding some thin lines down the center of each petal. Get rid of all those pencil marks so you can really see your illustration. Take a smaller fine liner and with the line shading, the first thing we wanna do is add a whole bunch of shading right near the stamen, the center of the flower. It's gonna give that sunflower a whole lot of depth. And then we're gonna do like a big scribbly mess on those petals. Sometimes a scribble shading is the best way to go and you actually might wanna use a thicker fine liner for that. Switch back to that little fine liner, do some more little thin lines on the petals. It'll make the whole flower really pop and that's it. Sophia wants to see dandelions, both yellow and white. So let's start with the white ones, the big poofies. Uh, draw a circle, give it a stem, do a little cluster of lines right in the center and then a whole tiny ring of tiny lines on the outer edge. Throw another one in there, tiny cluster of lines at the center, ring of tiny lines and dots around the edge and that thin straight stem. The dandelion has real raggedy leaves. Um, and then to draw a yellow one, I'm going to do a curving stem that ends in a little triangle of lines and then these thin curving petals at the top. So it's kind of on an angle. And then go ahead and add some more raggedy leaves in there. Let's go over everything in pen. Start with that cluster of lines at the center, draw those stems, darken them a little bit. Make sure that you know the stems and leaves are much darker than the plant, than the blossoms themselves. We're going over the yellow dandelion there. I'm doing the contour drawing of these really raggedy leaves. And then the um, white blossoms, I think, are the most fun. You just want to do this circle made of tiny little lines and dots. So it looks very fluffy, very light, very barely there. And then when we go in with our smaller pen, you're going to first darken those leaves, you know, just do some thin lines. I like to make mine sometimes a little darker on one side of the leaf and lighter on the other, and then use that thin fine liner to do like just some very light lines on the blossom, leaving lots of negative space, of course, because we want it to look really, really, really barely there. Candace asked to see Australian sweet pea and sweet pea just has the most delicate little blossoms. So I'm almost thinking of drawing like Kleenex, like tissues, just these really random blob shapes and they each have some petals kind of falling away at the bottom. Let's go over it in pen so you can really see. I've done really thin stems that are sort of curving and wobbling. The flowers are made up of a couple petals, kind of layered, and they're all just random shapes. And then they have a few dark leaves at the very base. I also put some little blossoms kind of drooping up over the top, some larger leaves, that's the peas actually, and some little curly cues because it has these very delicate tendrils. Um, I'm darkening those pea shapes, <laughs> those pea pod shapes, as well as the leaves at the base of each flower. And then you 
want to take that smaller fine liner and just do some really thin little lines um, just on the blossoms and those can kind of go anywhere. Uh, thicken up those little tendrils and that is it for the Australian sweet pea. Next up, Debbie asked to see the magnolia because it symbolizes luck and stability. So start with a circle and put a little circle at the base. Again, you're going to get those three large petals and one really thin one across the bottom and it automatically gives you that look of depth. Um, like you're looking into this conical flower or concave might be a better. Anyways, I'm getting off track here. Put a whole bunch more petals around the edge. They can be different shapes. They can be different sizes. Do an angled stem and then a couple long thin leaves to kind of frame the flower and then a nice little bud peeking out too I think really looks like the magnolia and of course everything is joined together with some stems. I just realized that one bud and leaf was kind of getting too into the middle of the page and I do want to do two more flowers so I'm going to place the bud sort of right below the flower and then let's go over everything in pen. You've got that nice thin petal across the bottom. Those four petals in the center are framed by some larger petals. Each one has a different shape. Uh, we've got these really long, thin, smooth leaves. And we've also done little branches to join everything together, a flower bud, and then the stamen in the center is going to be defined by all these thin, tiny lines. And we can make the branches look like wood by just doing some little bits and bobs going off in every direction, make them look rough. I'm going to get rid of all those pencil lines. We've got a really smooth, simple contour drawing. And now we take that smaller fine liner. I'm using the 0.2 millimeter nib here, or 0.3, I think. And I am just shading the petals. So I add a lot of lines where the petal meets that stamen in the center to show the concave shape. I add lines at the base of any petal that's sitting behind another petal to show that, you know, there's a shadow cast by the top petal. And then for the leaves to show how smooth the magnolia leaf is, I'm just doing like very basic straight flat lines. Because remember with your line shading, it's not just about adding the depth and shadow, but it's also about showing the shape. So is something ruffled, is it smooth? You can do so much with line shading. And that's your magnolia complete. I had a couple requests for orchids. So that's what we're going to do next. Start with your guide for this one. Draw three circles, kind of in a U shape. Come down with a little stem, straight stem on an angle and a couple leaves. Each circle represents a flower, so here's how you draw them. Start with the two side petals, add one on the top, two tiny ones peeking out, and then two C curves. Each petal is kind of like a rounded triangle almost. And for the middle, you really do just have to do those two C shapes, and I think it really comes together. It can be quite simple, and you still capture the essence of the flower. Let's go over it and pen these rounded petals that come to a nice point, like a rounded triangle. The petals at the bottom are just peeking out and the flowers get a little smaller um, as they get towards the end there. I'm going to go over the stem and those big smooth leaves. Um, when it comes to shading, I'm not gonna do a lot. I'm just doing some nice thin lines that follow the shape of each leaf. And what I wanna do, the best thing I can do for those flowers is just to darken the stem and leave the flowers a nice bright clean white to get that orchid look. The hibiscus flower was another popular request so let's end with that. You need to start by drawing a circle and then give yourself a guide of five lines kind of splaying out um, with a bit of movement. You'll draw a simple petal shape around each line. Make sure you've got a little semicircle right at center and then draw the stamen. It's a line with an oval on the end. Now the petals are a bit ruffly, so you can sketch that little ruffly shape in now, or you can start going over everything in pen. Wiggle the pen a little bit, you know, make sure the uh, perimeter of each petal isn't too smooth. And we can also put that leaf and a bit of a stem. The contour drawing for this one is pretty simple. Darken up the center a little bit. Give the end of the stamen a little more shape by doing some lines and dots. A few lines on the leaf will go a long way and then we'll start to do our line shading. So really darken the leaf. Uh, the hibiscus flower, because it is so concave, it has that deep center where the um, stamen kind of pops out of, you want to do a lot of line shading. So do these thin, tiny lines um, on the edges of the petal to show the ruffly nature of those petals and do lots of little curving lines moving with each petal that start at the center of the flower and kind of 
move outward, um, but don't quite go to the edge of the petal. You're gonna end up with a really, really dark center. And here's my little trick. At this point, you can take a white gel pen and add that stamen line back in so that you can really see the stamen at the center of the flower. I'm gonna darken up my leaf a little more. Actually, I'm gonna add another leaf to frame the flower really nicely. And then that's it, my hibiscus is complete. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and especially thank you for getting your requests in. This YouTube channel does not work without you and I wanna make sure you're seeing the content that matters most to you. Just another reminder that there is a worksheet available to go with today's video. If you need that extra guidance, head over to patreon.com slash Shada Campbell. It's only two bucks to join or you can now sign up for free. I'll see you there.